Hi everyone, this video is on what we call 3D trigonometry. We'll start by looking at the basic setup of a 3D trigonometry question, and then we'll tackle a few questions ourselves before wrapping up with a summary. So let's get started by looking at the situations where we use 3D trigonometry. Previously, we've dealt with triangles and trigonometry in two settings. 3D trigonometry isn't too different from this. We'll be using similar techniques and the same trigonometric equations to solve for some unknown variable, whether it's a side length or an angle size. Here's one example of what a 3D trigonometric diagram could look like. Let's break this down a little. A simple way of thinking about all of the shapes and lines represented here is to think of line OT as being some sort of vertical building. Let's say a lighthouse. Then you could think of A and B as ships and angles alpha and beta as the angle of elevation from the ships up to the top of the lighthouse. This is just an easy way to wrap your head around thinking about trigonometry in 3D. So in this diagram, there's three triangles. There are two right angle triangles formed by A and B and the top of the tower, and a third triangle created by the base. This third triangle may be right angled, but we can't assume it is unless it's explicitly marked or stated in the question. This is important to know because we can only use Pythagoras' theorem and trigonometric ratios in right angle triangles. So those are the main features of 3D trigonometry. Essentially, we'll be using the information given in one or two of the triangles to help find unknown information in other triangles. With that, let's use a similar diagram in a practice question. Find the value of theta to the nearest degree. All right, we've already been through how we have three triangles here and how we're going to use the given measurements to find this angle, theta. What is new here is that the base triangle is clearly marked as being a right angle triangle. This means that we can use Pythagoras' theorem and trigonometric ratios in any of the three triangles. So let's map out exactly what we're going to do to answer this question. We want to find theta, which is in this triangle here. If we know the length of AO, then we could use tan theta equals opposite on adjacent to find theta. So how are we going to find the length of AO? Well, in this base triangle, we have two of the other side lengths. That means that we can use Pythagoras' theorem to find AO. Great, let's get started on that. Pythagoras' theorem says that in a right angle triangle, the square of the hypotenuse, C, is equal to the sum of the squares of the other sides, A and B. In triangle AOB, AB is the hypotenuse. So we can say that 13 squared equals 5 squared plus AO squared. Rearranging to get AO squared as the subject gives us AO squared equals 13 squared minus 5 squared. So AO squared equals 144. Taking the square root, we get AO equals positive or negative 12. Since AO is a distance, and we can't have a negative distance, we just take AO equals positive 12 as our answer. Nice. Now let's shift our attention to triangle ATO. We already said that we're going to use tan to find theta because we have the lengths of the opposite and adjacent sides. So tan theta equals opposite on adjacent, which equals eight on 12. Taking the inverse of tan to get theta as the subject gives us theta equals inverse tan eight on 12. Then we can use our calculators to find that theta equals 33 degrees, 41 minutes and 24 seconds. The question asks for theta to the nearest degree, so we'll round this up to 34 degrees. Good job with that question. Let's move on to another one. Using the given diagram, find the height of the rectangular prism to one decimal place. All right. Let's take a look at what information we're given. We're given one side length and one angle size in this right angle triangle. And we're being asked to find the height of the rectangular prism, which is this length here. In other words, we've been given the length of the hypotenuse and we want to find the length of the side adjacent to the angle of interest. Knowing this, we'll be needing cos. Cos theta equals the adjacent over the hypotenuse. In this triangle, 
theta is 40 degrees, the hypotenuse is 6 centimetres, and the adjacent is our unknown. Substituting these into the formula gives us cos 40 equals a over 6. Multiplying both sides by 6 to get a as the subject leaves us with a equals 6 times cos 40. Using a calculator, this comes out as 4.59626. Finally, we'll round this to one decimal place as the question requires. So, we can conclude that the height of the prism is 4.6 centimetres to one decimal place. And we're done. With that, let's wrap this video up with a summary. In this video, we were introduced to 3D trigonometry. Essentially, we use the information given in a 3D diagram to find out other pieces of unknown information. We did this using Pythagoras' theorem and trigonometric ratios. Remember though, that these can only be used in right angle triangles. So that's it for this video. See you all next time.